Good morning, everyone. How's everyone feeling after day to night out? Yeah? Oh, right on. Thank you guys for being here this morning. I'm sure it was just as rough for you as it was for me. But welcome. Three ways to visualize outliers in Tableau. Uh, this thing, I'm sure you guys know the spiel by now. And today's agenda, uh, I'll do a brief introduction of myself. Uh, we're going to talk about the pace of AI to insights, how that's kind of evolving, changing, and then how what we need to do as data people to really make that effective. Right? Um, I'm also going to try to equip you with kind of three tactical ways that you can visualize outliers. I'm hoping this can help you guys kind of vet out these insights quicker. And then three strategies at presenting AI insights to your stakeholders. So, Brief introduction, my name is Ethan Lang. I'm the director of uh, analytics engineering at Playfair Data. Uh, Playfair Data, we're an in-end analytics consultancy, so we, we, do, we do it all. Do all analytics. I'm um, also a re recent author, uh, published the statistical tableau last year um, around this time. So if you haven't checked that out, check it out. I enjoy statistics and visualization, so why not plug those things in together? And that's what we did here with that book. So let's talk about AI. Where to begin, right? I pulled this, uh, this example from Tableau's website. Uh, this is a demo that they did of Tableau Next. And I'm just going to, let's just talk through it together, and then let's just have a conversation right, about this. So the example here is uh, I'm a CEO. I get into my phone. I see my daily digest. And it tells me that inventory is low for a product. Uh, because of this increase of digital mentions um, from a social media post. So I click a couple buttons to say, show me what inventory looks like. And yeah, it produces a really cool chart. Indeed, inventory is getting low, um, which is great. What's causing the decrease? It's my next question. So it breaks down inventory by product. We can see that it's this specific product, the slip runner. Uh, that's causing kind of this decrease uh, of inventory. So I dive in deeper. I say, give me that by region. And it gives me a nice chart, uh, breaks it down by region. I can see that there's two regions in particular that are having a, a decrease uh, in inventory. But here's the thing. We get this really cool action. So the agent's actually serving up, submit a change request for that inventory. So we, we click on that. I say, yeah, why not? I'll submit that request. And I submit that request. I change inventory from one region to another. And that inventory is now in flight to this other region. All is well. Right? Right? <laughs> All right, let's, let's talk this through as data people. What if weather was involved with this low inventory? What if that inventory was actually in route and hadn't made it to, to those regions yet? There's no way the AI would know that, right? We don't have weather in our business data. Well, most businesses do not. What if it was human error? What if that inventory was actually sitting on the dock at these regions, and the warehouse manager just hadn't checked in that PO yet? It wasn't in our systems. AI didn't know that, right? Or supply chain. Uh, what if we were actually working a deal to get that inventory from our suppliers and that just hadn't gone through yet? All these situations are things that we as data people need to ask ourselves and approach AI uh, because AI is moving very quickly. As we saw, it could make that change in less than five minutes. But was it the right thing to do? We haven't even verified that yet. We're just trusting, trusting the AI at this point. So it's up to us to kind of break through that. Um, and build trust within AI, especially over the next two to three years. I think that's going to be our new ad hoc request, right? Did I make the right decision? Instead of, should I make this decision? So I'm going to switch over to Tableau, and we are going to talk through this together. Like I said, I want to equip you all with several ways that you can kind of visualize data, visualize outliers, uh, to help you and help your business uh, stakeholders kind of determine if these decisions we're making are right, wrong, or if we should make them at all. Uh, so this is a, a workbook that I built. I know this isn't a hands-on workshop, 
Uh, but I am going to get a little dirty uh, in Tableau and show you how to build this. This is actually available on my Tableau Public, so if you want to download it, re-engineer it later, uh, feel free. But let's jump over, and we're going to build uh, these three models. So standard deviations, I'm going to show you how to build this and kind of visualize these outliers using that. Uh, median with quartiles. Uh, this is essentially a box plot, but I'll show you why I would prefer this method over a box plot. Um, and then uh, z-scores. So this is an a analysis that we can do where we actually quantify each mark on the view uh, to see whether it's an outlier or not. So let me just start on a blank canvas here. And I'm, I'm just going to start right here from a dual, dual axis combination chart. Uh, it's a line chart with circle marks on each inflection point of that line. And I'm going to use this because I'm going to drop conditional formatting onto those marks. Um, if you're not familiar how to build this, it's just you add two of the same measures on your row shelf. And if you right click on one of those pills, you'll get an option here that says dual axes. And then on one of them, on the marks card, you'll change that to circle. Okay? So that's the setup. So let's jump in. We're going to do the standard deviation first. So I'm going to hop over to the analytics pane here in, uh, in Tableau. Uh, so we're very familiar with the data pane. This is the analytics pane. You can toggle to it from there. And I'm going to drag on distribution band. And I'm going to drop that across the table. We'll see this editing uh, box pop up. And this is where we can actually choose how we want to quantify that distribution. Um, from this value drop down, I'm just going to change that to standard deviation. And I'm going to change this factor to plus or minus two standard deviations. And we can see Tableau is kind of building that banding in the background. And just for some formatting techniques, I'm going to add a line that's just going to bold those borders. And I'll leave it kind of that darker gray for now. And then one more time, I'm going to add another distribution band here. And I'm going to change that to standard deviation. I'm going to leave this at plus or minus one standard deviations. Um, and we can see it kind of adds in this uh, central zone, if you will, around the average. Um, and we can see that's kind of a lighter shade. Uh, by default, you'll have to change that. You can just change the fill um, and then add a line. Um, and it will bolden, bolden the line or bolden the border on that. Say OK. Uh, so now just with these two things alone, we can kind of visually see where those outliers are, right? We have a, a few points up top, one down here below. But I'm going to do one more thing uh, for our stakeholders. I'm going to add a pretentive attribute of color. Uh, so I created this calculation here. Let me zoom in for you all. Uh, this is just conditional formatting. That's looking at the window average and the window standard deviation. Uh, so these are window functions within Tableau, which makes this dynamic. So once I apply this conditional formatting, that standard deviation, this conditional formatting, will actually update um, if I apply filters or change the data or data comes in. Um, it, all, it won't break. It'll be dynamic. Um, and you can see here I'm just quantifying or classifying these as a bad anomaly if it's, if it's a, you know, a negative outlier, a good anomaly if it's a positive outlier, we are talking profit here. I guess I should be more clear. Uh, if we have a positive outlier in profit, that's a good thing, right? Um, and then everything else I'm just classifying as expected for this. So I'm going to take that and drop it onto the color property of the marks card. And we can see it comes to life here. Uh, so now I have these, these anomalies that are highlighting. Uh, so my stakeholders, they can see very clearly OK, I don't need to worry about anything here in the middle, but what's, what's going on here with the yellow? What's going on here with, with kind of that uh, blue up top? Um, what do I need to do about those? Or maybe there's more insight that we can find by drilling into those. So that's one method. The next method is this median with quartiles. So let me just add this real quick. Um, as data folks, is this an effective chart type? Um, box plot by default. Uh, I love box plots, don't get me wrong, but this looks terrible. Uh, it doesn't even draw the lines all the way across. There's just a lot of things wrong with this here. So let me clear that. But essentially, we're going to rebuild that very quickly um, and make it look a lot nicer for our stakeholders and easier to digest. So I'm going to add the median with quartiles, again, from the analytics pane here. And that's going to give me that interquartile range. So this is your IQR. You got your median, 
and then the 75th and 25th percentile. Uh, anything within this section makes 50% of your data um, across the, the mid-range here. Um, and now we need to add uh, the banding, which represents the upper and lower whisker. Um, I'm going to do that by doing another distribution band. And for this, I won't go into this in too much detail, but just trust me, uh, it's 2.698 plus or minus 2.698 standard deviations uh, from the average here. So I'm going to change those factors, and you'll see that come to life here. And I'll add some, uh, again, some borders, uh, so it kind of draws those hard lines. And let me bring this back to the front so we get that clear kind of mid-range zone. And you can see here, using this method, we have one kind of outstanding outlier up there at the top that we should probably pay attention to. Now let's compare that real quick. I just want to show you guys some of the method of the madness here. So if I drop that box plot, uh, one thing I'd like to point out is you can see these upper and lower whiskers, they stop on that mark. Um, by nature, box plot, uh, the way that calculation works, those upper and lower whiskers will stop at the max or min uh, value within its range. But this uh, 2.698 is kind of the max range of a box and whisker plot. Um, so we're kind of adding, a, I think, a d additional detail um, so you can kind of see where it is on the border versus here's the top and it's way up there. One other tip is z-score testing. And z-score tests I really, I really like. Uh, this is where you know, several folks yesterday in my presentation came up to me afterwards and were like, how do I quantify it if I'm not like, visualizing the data? Z-score test is perfect for that. Uh, you don't need a data visualization. You can kind of quantify those scores and then visualize the scores even if you wanted to. So let me show you guys some of this. So I have the z-score test. Let me just show you the calc too. And just like with anything in statistics or math, if you're equipped with some of the knowledge of you know, what that uh, calculation actually is and represents, you can probably re rebuild it within a calculated field in Tableau. And that's essentially what I've done here uh, with some window functions. So again, some of profit, we have window, fun uh, window average, uh, window standard deviation. Um, and this is essentially just the uh, calculation that you would use for a z-score test. And what that does, I added it to the tooltip so we can kind of see some of the madness here, but it's added a z-score uh, test uh, 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 calculation there. So you can kind of see what it's quantifying in the tooltip. So as I hover over these circle marks, you can kind of see they go positive, they go negative um, as I kind of move around here. So you see there's a positive z-score and a negative z-score right here. And it's actually really interesting. It's all oscillating around the average line. So if I add an average here, I can see that the further away from the average, if I go down, the further away, that z-score becomes more and more negative. As I go further above the average, that z-score becomes more and more positive. And this is how we can kind of quantify how much of an outlier it is. So let me just add a few more things here. I'm going to do another distribution band, drop that onto the table, and change this to standard deviation. And I'm going to do plus or minus two standard deviations. There we go. And you can kind of see that come to life. And again, visually, we can see there's some outliers here. Uh, notice it does look a lot like our standard deviation method. Uh, you're connecting the dots here because z-score tests are very much in tune with standard deviations. That's what they're built from. One more thing I'll add here is another conditional formatting calculation. So again, just like before, here's that calculation. Uh, it's using window uh, functions, so again, it's very responsive and dynamic, and it's just looking at if it's above or below a certain z-score and then classifying that as a good or bad anomaly. Okay. So if I drop that onto the color property here, again, you'll see those kind of highlight. We can see very clearly these are my good outliers, these are my bad outliers. Here's just expected values. 
Um, so again, it makes it very clear for your stakeholders and for you to communicate to your stakeholders what to pay attention to within your data visualization. Okay, so that was the tactical bit. I did also want to leave you with just three strategies that I would recommend uh, that kind of help communicate AI insight, uh, help validate these things, help build trust with your stakeholders, help build trust with the AI agent. Um, but I think this is going to be really key as we kind of move into this faster paced uh, kind of AI served up insight and action. But a few strategies here. Uh, I would recommend just taking that AI insight, drop it right into the dashboard. I think there's, there's extensions coming where they, it'll actually show up and be connected live. But it, just use an image uh, uh, object and drop it in. So you can kind of connect the dots, show what the AI was serving up, what the data is telling you within your analysis. Uh, I'd also recommend putting links of your resources. So just like with what we saw in the keynote where you know, here's the sources we use. This is what the AI pulled from. Uh, same thing with your documentation, right? Like build trust with your stakeholders. Uh, you don't want to serve them up. Here's all the you know, amazing functions and stuff I use. They don't care about that. But if there is somebody that does want to know, here's what standard deviations are, you can link to the documentation. Also, you can link to more detailed reports. So if this was an inventory report, maybe I can link out to something that's, you know, not just this analysis, but something more detailed so they can kind of connect the dots between those as well. And then last, and to me most importantly, humanize this stuff. We, as data people, we need to take, you know, we play an important role, especially as we move into AI. So put your picture in there. Say, hey, if you have a question, come to me. Let's figure out together what you're trying to solve and how we can work together to solve that, right? Let's keep the communication going. Uh, to me, that's, I think, going to be key kind of moving into this age of agents. So that is all I had today. It was a quick 20 minutes. I hope you guys got a lot out of it, but I really appreciate you prioritizing your time this morning uh, coming and checking out the session. So 